What is going on guys, Lord Valor here, and welcome back to another episode of LifeCast. It is midsummer, and I am here for some midsummer night night. It's not night yet, is it? 430 isn't nighttime, is it Robert? I mean, depends on your point of view. Mmm. You sound a little bit more nuanced than you should on this topic. Yeah, you see, uh, time is a social construct, so uh, if you're like me and you become enlightened, then uh, time is kind of just relative. So if it, it's nighttime, if you want it to be nighttime. You sound like a person who's a senior in college trying to justify dating a freshman <laughs> in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, welcome uh, to LifeCast. I believe it's episode 30. I didn't actually 30. check, but I do believe it is episode 30. Wowie. I know, 30 episodes of this. How does that um, make me feel? It makes me feel old. Um, mm. I've been doing this since 2017, Robert. That's five years. That is five years. Five years not... for 92 subscribers, everybody. <laughs> yeah. And but for... you, ladies and gentlemen, can change that. <laughs> <laughs> so we See, can bump it up to 93. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Are you subscribed, Robert? I am, in fact, subscribed. Okay, praise God. Yes, <laughs> sir. I was about ready to give you crap. But anyway, Robert, the summer, mm. uh, what, whatever you're comfortable sharing with our audience, go ahead and share what you've been up to this summer. Alrighty. So, uh, I... I've been working at a summer camp uh, called Camp Sun Life in Michigan. Uh, I'm the waterfront director, so I'm just <laughs> basically in charge of lifeguards and making sure nobody drowns and stuff like that. And I'm assuming nobody and has. No, not yet. No. <laughs> so, so, so far, it's going good. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Uh, yeah, kind of just doing that and just sort of helping out the rest of the staff when I'm not doing that. And uh, it's, it's been good so far, just chilling. Um, yeah, I, I pretty... come... Sorry? I call us the summer summer camp bros because we're both working in summer camp this summer. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, but in your free time when you're not working, um, mm -hmm. uh, video games, what, do you, what are you up to in, the, in that realm? Uh, video games, uh, get them out of Siege with... Uh, with, with the boys, the siege uh, psychopaths. Yeah. The siege psychopaths. Um, other than that, it's a little random. Uh, been playing through uh, this game called Metro Twenty Thirty Three. Uh, it's like my fourth playthrough. Uh, it's like an older game, but it's a uh, it's like a first person shooter kind of. I don't know, kind of horror esque game. Um, but a uh, really cool kind of story behind it, set in like post-apocalyptic like Moscow, and uh, yeah, it's kind of cool. It's a good good story, good atmosphere. It's kind of an old janky game, but that's kind of why I like it. So. I was just researching it. Um, do you know when it was released, year wise? As in, and I believe. Hmm. Um, I will look that up. But I'm pretty sure it looks. A yeah, lot like does. Dark Souls, but like if Dark mm -hmm. Souls had guns. From the pictures I'm looking at here. I feel that, yeah. Yep. It's like the very, yeah, ruined, yeah. Yeah. Yep, yeah, every, everything is kind of ruined, yeah. Well, yeah, so it's like, so it's set in the year 2033 after a fictional kind of uh nuke dropping world war three in 2013 so it's like 23rd 20 it's like 20 years later uh after after all the nukes have fallen and so kind of the last of the russian population is like sitting underground in the in the metro system the subway system so did russia get bombed is that what happened here yeah yeah it's like russia and the u.s like bombed each other it's kind of the pull the trigger story. do it um <laughs> <laughs> uh, are, you, are you playing the original or the redux that has like the graphic uh, comparisons yes uh i've played through the redux uh like a lot i'm also but yeah playing through the original right now um the original like 
Uh, it just sort of has a charm about it. Like, it's... Uh, I don't know what to compare it to, but it's like... It's definitely a lot jankier, and the mechanics are a lot more, like, weird. Um, despite mm -hmm. looking worse, it also runs way worse. <laughs> which I always thought was funny. Um, like, on my old, my old hardware uh, on my computer, it was like... Redux ran like flawlessly and also looked fantastic. And then oh, yeah. original was like didn't look great and also kind of ran like a I don't know like a piece of cheese. <laughs> he, uh, he made you feel like you had a potato for a computer. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. Just sort of just sort of the atmosphere of it. Like I don't know. The guns just feel like just kind of like punchy and like visceral and uh i don't know it's so like cool. there's monsters and stuff right yes, yes so do the are... monsters are like uh, what what is the lore behind that if it's like a nuke drop is it like they were affected by the radiation yeah yeah basically um, so is that humans what am i looking at here <laughs> uh it's not explained super well the most common monster is called a nasolysis. Um, and I have a stroke trying to spell that, but uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, yeah, and it's kind of like like a really big like rat thing, basically. Mm. I don't know. Kind of hard to explain, I guess. And kinda it's, like it could a, affect animals or humans at that point. Okay. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. That's that's what I was taking it as. Mm -hmm. That's, okay, that's fun. Yep. yep. What a, yep. So, uh, looks like it's like 20 bucks. But, yeah, yeah I'm definitely going to have to goes, look into it. Yep. Yeah. For it's, sure. Uh, it's kind of interesting. But, um, so the, the, the Redux, like, Redux is definitely a better game, but yeah. 20, the OG game is kind of a vibe, so yeah, one of those deals. I mean, you you can't beat the originals, right? I mean, even if it exactly. doesn't run as well, you, it's still mm. good to play through the originals. Like, yep. when I was playing, um, now what is the game? I played it on, I did that, 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 and now I'm having that, a stroke. That, 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 uh, <laughs> The Vanishing of Ethan Carter. Um, okay. I, I, I got the Redux version for free, but I also got the non-Redux version for free. Oh, yeah. So, like, I was just, just going to... I should just launch the uh, non-Redux version, or the, yeah, the regular version, and just see if it runs any better, if there's any changes. It's mainly just, mm. like, graphic changes, but, like... Right. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I just find that interesting. Mm. Um, yeah, so yep. is, is there anything else you've been spending your time in in uh in the world of video games um let's see yeah it's mostly a siege in that but uh also some cousins that i have been getting into the forest oh which, good which you played before so yeah I'm yeah gonna have to play that. you should play that you and i've one of these days yeah yeah me you and ivan should you should crash land on our island and uh you should definitely join our series i think that'd be pretty funny yeah that um, would be good to have in yep. a series because me and i've still have to record the fourth episode fifth and sixth episode so kind of what we do if you kind of want to behind the scenes viewers of what we do is we just record like three hours of the forest and then I just break it up into like three or four episodes um oh interesting it's just it's not, so it's like yeah gotcha. it, it would be ideal if i'd play it for like eight hours and then like break it up but like yeah mm -hmm. so where we lost left the last episode was actually like not where we're probably gonna start the next episode. We can try, but like, it's gonna be interesting. Did, but you did a bit like behind the scenes or whatever. Yeah, there you go. Um, okay. So yeah, that should be fun um, to get you yeah. to join that with us because I was bugging you about that game. I bugged you like several times. Yeah, I like... no, I know. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I. So some cousins of mine were basically like. Uh, like, all right, what game are we all getting? And I was like, I don't have like money to spend on the game, so whatever we're playing, like, if you buy me something, I'll play it. But I'm not gonna buy anything. So they bought me the forest. So there we go. Yeah, that works out really well. Um, I yeah. I still know very little about that game, um, and the lore behind it, and like, I've I've yeah. watched some playthroughs, but like that was like way back when it came out, when like people like Markiplier and um, 
Jacksepticeye played it. I watched their oh, playthroughs, gotcha. but I remember like nothing about it. So I'm kind of yeah. just relearning the game as well. Um, and again, I haven't played it in like three, four months now. Um, gotcha. Simply because summer's busy. Um, yep. But when I do have time to play, um, I have been playing Dark Souls 3, which if you told me a couple months ago I would be like really enjoying Dark Souls 3, I would have called you crazy. But Dark Souls 3 is a fantastic game, even though it has like this, um, it has a, what's the word, Robert? It's known for being very hard. Difficult. Yeah, it, it's very known for its difficult gameplay, um, mm -hmm. kind of quirky uh, movements, <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, and like just the quirkiness of the game is really kind of what makes it great for me. Um, but as if you, if you are like really lost and want to get into Dark Souls, find somebody like one of your friends who has played it and just play them while they're watching you stream or while they're in the room with you because they know things that'd be like, Hey, I see you're kind of stuck here. Um, you should upgrade your sword and then go fight that boss. Um, because what it was for me was I, I would get stuck. I was like, okay, I feel like I've explored everywhere, but I got to advance in the game somehow. And then my friend, friend Nathan, uh, you guys know from Siege videos was like, Hey, just do this, go to your, uh, blacksmith and upgrade your sword and then go to this person and go to this location on a map, unlock this guy by freeing him from a jail cell. And then you'll be able to get this, this, and that, and all these other things. So like... Uh, Dark Souls 3 is definitely a game where you need to have, maybe it's a YouTuber that you can watch that you can be like, okay, I'm stuck here, what do I do? Um, you will be wicking things a lot, because it is a very extensive game, but... It seems, seems pretty in-depth, yeah. Very in-depth, but um, I'm enjoying my night playthrough with the Hollow Slayer Sword, um, so honestly, I, I can't complain, because I've been, I've been doing pretty good, I think... It was last week. I had a week off of work, and so I was playing it quite a bit. I played it probably. Uh, in that week, I probably played it 10, 15 hours. And Thanks. I got through, like, four or five bosses in that time, uh, in that span yeah. of a week. And I, like, advanced through, like, 25, 30% of the game in that week. So, like, it's definitely achievable if you know what you're doing or if you get good advice. So... Mm -hmm. I, I would definitely recommend Robert if you uh, if it's ever on sale again. Um, I know the Steam summer sale is gone already, but like I think you should add it to your wish list because it's it's a fun game. All right. Um, but yeah, a lot of siege for me as well. Uh, for the Steam summer Steam summer sale, jeez. Um, I I bought quite a few games. I bought. Um, all of I bought all games that were on sale. Obviously, I bought like Phasmophobia. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited to get into. Oh yeah. Um, some of you guys will know what hunting. this. I know it's it's. I'm thinking of starting a series with that one because that one's gonna yep. be fun. Um, Roller Coaster Tycoon. I brought the whole series, the classic version. Um, if if you're into like older games, um, I bought those. Yeah, I that's bought, right. You're, you're playing that a bit. It was. It's a lot of fun. Um, even the the classic, they changed original from the classic to make it like work a little bit better, and it's a lot. It's a lot smoother of an experience from the original that I played when I was like five. Um, gotcha. So even the classic version on Steam is kind of revamped a little bit, but it's still a lot of fun. Um, and oh, okay. when I think what I'm most excited for is either We Happy Few I got for like six dollars or five dollars or something and it's supposed to be like a forty dollar um game um so we happy few or subnautica below zero i finally bit the bullet and just got the, the second version the second subnautica game gotcha. i like to spoil myself once a year when the steam summer sale comes <laughs> around and just like buy a few new titles that i know i will enjoy there you um, go. i also brought blair witch and batman arkham knight so those are both okay. games I'm I'm excited to get into. I might stream or record Blair Witch because there's like several different endings uh, to that okay. one. Yeah, um, and there's a really cute dog in it. Um, 
I so yeah, that's that's there. kind of my uh, gaming experience recently. Um, gotcha. Lots of fun. I also bought Hollow Knight. I don't know if you're familiar oh, yeah. with that, but I've, I've, Ivan's I've played a lot of that. It. Yeah. So I I got it too. I don't know when I'm going to be able to get into it, but I'm I'm excited yeah. to get into a lot of these games I bought. So that should be yeah. fun. Um, did you buy yeah. anything with the Steam Summer Sale or not? Besides I... your friends getting you the forest. Uh, yeah, friends got me the forest. Friends also got me uh, Risk of Rain two. Oh, I'm heard uh, of that one. Played, played that. Also, oh, I think, think Ivan's played a bit of the first one. Uh, I don't know. It's kind of interesting. It's kind of this cartoony like third person shooter thing where uh, you kind of fight with your friends through a bunch of kind of like randomly generated mobs, and then you get to a teleporter at the end of each level. And then you kind of just keep going for as long as you can, because the the longer you're in each mission, the harder it gets. Wow, um, this looks very yeah, cartoony. Yeah, very cartoony. Um, so it's it's kind of interesting. It's not really my favorite, but it's it's sort of sort of an inter interesting game. So yeah, it's pretty good um, reviews overall. Yeah, yeah. I guess I guess a lot of people like it, but yeah. And then um, a game called Streets of Rogue. What? I don't know if you've heard of it. So, think like Grand Theft Auto, but like top down, like very uh, kind of 8 bit <laughs> arcade style. So, like <laughs> if uh, Stardew Valley and, uh, and, and GTA had a baby. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a pretty good comparison, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, very bizarre, like, very weird and random. Kind of weirdly fun, though. You're just, like, you spawn it, like, as a certain, like, class, and the classes are all, like, weird and different. It's, like, it also... if, you're a, if you're a doctor, you, like, can heal people, but you, you can't use weapons yourself, and so you have to, like, find a way around that. Um, and it's, like, a soldier who spawns in with, like, a machine gun or something, and then it's, like... You can go around and like there's like gang like groups of like thugs, um, and then there's just random stuff you have to do like oh I gotta steal this you have to kill this person you have to do whatever, um, and then the cops are around and like if you don't want them on you you can bribe them and like it, it's it's bizarre it, it's kind of fun it does hit me as a kind of a bizarre game but it also reminds me I'm trying to think of the exact name but Prison Escape I think is what it's called. Um, oh, um, the the Escapist maybe. Ah, yeah. About this, I haven't played that, but I've heard of it. I got it for free on Epic Games. Um, Interesting. I haven't played it yet, but yeah, the Escapists. You nailed that one. It, it also gotcha. kind of looks exactly like that game as well. It does actually. Yeah, you're not wrong. It looks very similar. So, yeah, uh, kind kind of a very weird game. Like I only have like five hours in it, but uh. Oh, only was, five uh, hours. Yeah. That's that's quite a bit. But that's in, in video game funny. time, no. But in like in real life hours, yeah. Compared to the casual seven hundred hours Steam says I have on Siege, then yeah. Uh, how many do I have in Siege now? Two hundred and seventy three hours. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Um, what do I have in Dark Souls now? Probably almost fifty. Uh, give me a second. I can't. I don't know the alphabet. Mm. Here we go. Yeah, forty six hours. Struggle is real. So yeah, that's that's just kind of what me and Robert have been into for uh, video games wise. But now we'll move a little bit into movie wise. Um, Robert, I know you don't want spoilers for Thor: Love and Thunder, so I'll give my spoiler free review here. Um, All right, sweet. So I saw it last night. I ran into some friends. I went with Joya and Kaylee, and it was a lot of fun. Both have been on this podcast. The other two oh, friends. Oh, you, know, you know Joya? No way, dude. That's crazy. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, yeah, so we went to Thor Love and Thunder. Um, my spoiler-free review goes as this. I laughed 75% of the time. The other 25% of the time was serious, but it was a good serious. This movie did a really good job of having really funny moments, chuckling moments, serious moments, and scary moments all at the same mm. time. 
Um, so if you know anything, if you've seen the trailers, have you seen the trailers? Can I talk seen about a few the... trailers. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. So I'll talk about the trailers. So obviously, what you know is there's that really saturated guy that looks like Voldemort. Um, mm -hmm. I'm gonna look up the cast so I can make sure I say everybody's names right. Um, yeah. Gore. Um, the Gore. God Slayer. He has the. Um, he has the, the 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 sword that essentially is the only sword that can kill the gods, and it gives him the power to kill gods. And so, as you can probably figure out from the trailers, he is hunting after Thor. Um, mm. And yeah, uh, Taika Waititi is the he's Korg, but he's also the director of the movie, right? Like um, in uh, Ragnarok. Yep. And he does an excellent job of just conveying this movie, I think. Um, the last thing I think I saw of Taika Waititi was um, Free Guy. Um, oh, and that's I right. And I thoroughly enjoyed... <laughs> well, we were talking before the movie and we're like, uh, Taika Waititi, he doesn't just like appear in his movies as like some like side character. <laughs> he's like, he's, <laughs> he's just like, like yeah. I'm gonna be the main character and I'm gonna be the main <laughs> villain. And I'm like, okay, I respect it. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I I did like his work there, and so I went into Thor: Love and Thunder like optimistic, but also like terrified because mm -hmm. um, there seems to be a wave of like girls need to be able to all do all the superhero things too and i was scared mm. that that was kind of going to be overtaken by the what the movie was really supposed to be about was like a good thor movie um yeah. and i think he did a really good job of not focusing directly on the fact that jane foster became thor which sorry that's not really a spoiler that was in the trailers um <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so yep. i i think it was it was like a very funny movie i was laughing a lot of the time but like those yeah. moments that were serious were very serious um you saw in the trailer as well there was a scene where it was like completely saturated um and that was a really good scene um okay yeah so yeah like there's just the fact that they did completely black and white scene was really cool um yep yeah my only complaint is i wanted more of the villain Ah, but gotcha. the villain had a very good character arc throughout the whole movie so that's that's my spoiler free review i wish we could deep dive robert but you'll have to be back yeah. on sometime to deep dive i'll it. have to um, have to watch it yeah but yeah it was it was excellent movie in my opinion um sweet yeah no i uh i really liked the first two thor movies were like a little meh uh thor ragnarok was like probably one of my favorite marvel movies honestly um i think my I think my favorite Marvel movie is uh, The Winter Soldier, Captain America, The yeah. Winter Soldier. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I like I liked Ragnarok and uh, also watched Free Guy and um, yeah, just a pretty pretty good blend of like funny and kind of serious. So yeah, yeah, we'll have I have to, a we'll have to watch it. I have a lot of respect for uh, Taika Waititi. Mm -hmm. Um, just be yeah, because he has that good like. He has these serious moments, he keeps those moments serious, but then he's like, has a really good job of writing like really funny jokes um, and just keeping you like interested throughout the whole yep. thing. So, yeah, I definitely, right. definitely would recommend Thor Love and Thunder. Um, Alrighty. I will look into it. Had something else I was going to go along with that about Take of TT. I don't remember. Is it, is it, is it Taika or Taika? I think I've heard I say Taika. Okay. T I A K A. I I yeah, probably butchering his name, but what T T is his last name, so I know how to say that. There you um, go. Yeah, uh, a lot of respect for him and his work. Yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. So that should and you should definitely go see it. Um. You said you watched Bad Guys. Is that what it was? That like animated wolf yeah. movie. Yeah. And I kind of want to hear about that now. Um. Yeah. So it was like. So it was kind of interesting. Uh, I don't know, the animation style was like... I don't really know how to describe it. Um, kind of have like like Despicable Me as like a starting point. Um, kind of slightly more like... Uh, like papery, I guess, than that. Mm. 
Yeah. If that makes any sense. The, the animation like style of bad guys. The bad guys is like mm. really interesting to me. Yeah, it's like it's kind of like a, a blend between yeah, kind of that like kind of newer stylized like I don't know, more recent like Disney movies and stuff like that. And then kind of going back to kind of old cartoons of like you know, Tom and Jerry and like Bugs Bunny and stuff like that. Yo. Um Does he fall in love with a rabbit? No. Oh, praise God. Because <laughs> I'm looking at a with... picture, and I'm like, oh. oh no, this is a rabbit. <laughs> it looks like a rabbit, and is he dancing with the rabbit? I'm confuddled. It's, it's, a, it's a fox. That is a point. fox. Okay. I was like, they're, now they're just ripping off Zootopia. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> but, uh, so your review of the movie, was it good, bad, otherwise? Uh, review of the movie, yeah, pretty funny. Um just like i don't know a lot of just like physical humor um the the voice cast is pretty good it's like so the the wolf was like uh he played uh let's see um in have you seen iron man 2 yes i've seen uh, all of them except for hulk gotcha uh justin hammer or whatever his name is that like weapons guy like it seems kind of weird but like it was kind of the the vibe of the wolf was like kind of this like smooth kind of criminal thing kind of like uh like george clooney kind of from like ocean's mm -hmm. 11 kind yeah of vibe. Mm -hmm. uh so i think that kind of nailed that pretty well um kind of that like smooth voice and like whatever um the yeah so like pretty funny um kind of whatever it's a little bit of a kid's movie but like kind of interesting like kind of redemption arc for the for the protagonists, because they are technically, you know, bad, bad guys, obviously. Yeah, yeah. As in, as as the title suggests. Yeah, um, it is PG. Um, and I, yep. I, I, that was one me and Ivan were thinking about going to, but I'd spent like, <laughs> in that month, I'd probably spent almost fifty dollars on movies because there was a lot of movies. Like, I think I don't remember mm -hmm. what else came around during that time or was still in theaters during that time, but I saw a lot of Marvel movies during that time. Gotcha. And so it was yeah. like, yeah, maybe not. Um, yep. But yeah, it, it's definitely on my list. If you want to watch it again, you have to pay a little bit extra for Peacock. But uh, it's not on the free version of Peacock. It's on the paid version of Peacock. So. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah unfortunately. I guess that, yeah. But yeah, the ratings, it's like on IMDb, it's rated 6.9 out of 10, which is like pretty good. Mm -hmm. but yeah, like, I don't know. Wasn't that's like... about average. Yeah, wasn't like super great, but yeah, it wasn't wasn't really bad in any way. Um, yeah, kind of kind of funny, fun to watch. Um, but uh, yeah, nothing super spectacular, but yeah, not not too bad all in all. Yeah, so you would recommend going to see it anyway? Um, I don't know if I'd rec necessarily recommend like seeing it like in the theaters, but like yeah, seeing it like on your own time with like some friends or whatever. If you're paying like a few bucks for like Peacock or whatever, then then I'd say so. Yeah, worth the vibe. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right, so moving on into another animated movie. I just watched this like an hour ago. Sing Two was mm. an interesting movie. Do you care about spoilers? Nah. I'm... Okay. So the whole plot. If you do, you saw Sing, yes. Uh. Actually, no. I oh. saw... I don't know. I saw little bits and pieces of it. Didn't okay, the well, thing the, the thing of Sing is uh, Moon is a failing, like, theater guy, and so mm -hmm. he has to put on a show to, like, get his money back, and obviously by the end of the movie, he puts on a good show, he gets a sponsor, and he rebuilds his theater, and he gets what he needs, right? And so mm -hmm. the second movie is all about him trying to make it into, like, Hollywood, essentially, and, like, bringing his like actor or his singers who sung in the last uh performance um mm -hmm. to get them to hollywood and to get them to put on like a really cool show um so the the movie starts off like obviously they're doing like an alice in wonderland kind of theater or a play mm -hmm. and then the judge whoever was like gonna bring them to hollywood said you're not good enough and kind of just left him there to rot but they decide hey we're just gonna sneak into 
Hollywood and we're going to sneak into a studio and we're going to uh, essentially force ourselves to perform in front of somebody famous. And obviously they pull off a good sneak in um, mm-hmm. and they get to perform in front of Wolf, I believe was his name. Okay. Um, give me a second. On Jonah, you just watched. I know. I'm really bad with the uh, tell it with character names. Anyway, he was a wolf essentially. Okay. Um, and he's like this really big guy. He's really kind of mean. And he's like, "All right, Moon, don't disappoint me." And so obviously, there's like huge stakes for him if he messes up. Right. Um, so he essentially writes a uh, original screenplay um, performance musical and yeah he pulls it off in the end uh, that's as far as I'll go I won't try to explain the like nitty gritty details but I think what hit me was the fact that it was really edgy for a kids hmm. movie they played Billie Eilish's um, bad guy theme at one point and I'm like that song isn't necessarily like something I would want my eight year old to listen to, you know? Yeah, and like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, Sorry. Robert, yes. I, I, I had to edit it <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Um, I can, I can see and at it. one point, uh, the daughter of the billionaire was like, go to heck and i was like i i'm sorry what <laughs> in my <laughs> kids movie? And my, like yeah. i know it's heck but like 95 oh, percent of the audience is thinking oh go to hell instead of go to heck you know mm. so like i don't know i just felt like it was a really edgy movie overall and at one point wolf stands up he was sleeping in his bed he stands up and he was just completely nude they didn't show it obviously but they showed the reactions to the people who saw it and i'm like okay oh. <laughs> like again yeah, this is a that's... kids movie i i'm yeah. not saying i hated it because i really liked it um I thought it was but, an enjoyable movie, but I just thought it was pushing the limits of PG. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. But, yeah. I mean, you're using animals as well, so, like, I guess that gives you a little bit more free reign. Mm-hmm. Because animals don't wear clothes normally, anyway. Um, but they got some pretty, like, big guy actors. Um, Scarlett Johansson was in the first one. She was also in the second one. Oh, um, interesting. Didn't know that. Yeah, and she also sings. You know that... Um, in the first one, she has a song. I just added it to my Spotify. I did not know Scarlett Johansson could sing, but she can sing. Yeah, um, I didn't know that either, I guess. Let me look up the name of the song, because you will now not be... Now you'll just... All you're going to hear is uh, Scarlett Johansson singing. And she plays a porcupine in the movie. Um, uh, okay. Okay. It's it sing the first movie I really liked. The second movie is a little worse, but it's okay. Set yeah, it all free. Is the song that she sings. Free. Um so you'll have to listen to that after this. Okay. Um, but yeah, she's she does pretty good. Um Matthew McConaughey is the main um moon guy, the main character. Um, gotcha. And Eric Andre, do you know who Eric Andre is? He voices somebody, which, like, threw me so hard for a loop. Does he? Yes. That's hilarious. He, like, voices a lot of things. I didn't know he was, like, actually popular. Because he is, like, that really stupid Eric Andre show on Adult Swim that I'm watching on Hulu for some reason. Right. And, like, that whole... I feel like I'm losing... That's why you're watching it. It's the funniest show ever. It's really not. I'm losing brain cells every time I watch it, but I still continue to watch it. I don't understand. Um, uh, it's just like the way I describe it to people is like if you gave like a seven year old a camera and told them to like make a comedy show that's what it is it's just so mm-hmm. random and sporadic like he'd be yeah. like normally interviewing like a really famous person and all of a sudden he's like shoving pie in his face or something or he's like completely stripping his body naked and it's like what <laughs> what is happening yeah, it's, it's... no I've only seen a few bits and pieces of it it's a little it's a little obscure. I'm it's so lie. obscure. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he, he voices somebody. Um, and, um, yeah. They have, um, who else? Matthew McConaughey. Um, they have Bono voice um, Clay Calloway, which is like oh, okay. an actor 
in this is like a lion who was like a really famous singer but then he like went into hiding that classic um movie bit but yeah, yeah, yeah. overall sing two pretty good movie um right. i i mainly like it for the music because i'm a music guy love me some mm-hmm. music um, so the yeah, I would say yeah. the 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 move I liked Sing One so the original Sing better for its music but Sing Two wasn't bad either. Um, okay. But yeah, definitely yeah. I think you should watch Sing at least Robert. You don't have to worry about Sing Two, but I think you should watch the first Sing movie, for sure. Oh, all right, all right. That one pulls at the heartstrings at some, at one point, um, with gotcha. Johnny, the British dude. Um, Brit the British gorilla. Brit the British mate. Yeah, the British gorilla. Yeah, you knew that. Nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Man, I've seen I've seen little bits and pieces of it here and there, but uh, yeah, you should watch a, the full movie. movie. Mm. Yes. Right. All right. I will look into it. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is Stranger Things. I'm not going to go into deep, deep detail because um, I'll probably end up talking about this with somebody else later who's seen it. But Robert has not seen it, but he doesn't care as I much about spoilers. I have not seen a single episode. Ugh, it's so good, though. So, like, I thought seasons one through three were like, okay, they're pretty good. Like, this is really good thriller. But season four, I think, is just really good horror. I know they still list it. I I wonder if it's still if it's listed as a horror now. Gotcha. Because season yeah, it's definitely it's listed as a horror now, not a thriller. Um, Because season four took it to a whole new level. Um, Seasons one through three were definitely more thriller ish. There were some weird supernatural creatures, but season four just hit a whole new level of um, scary. Um, if you've seen the picture, look up the villain of uh, Stranger Things real quick, Robert. Stranger Things villain. Season 4 villain. Let's see what pops up. Yeah, this like Spider-Man looking dude with like the tentacles uh, coming out of his back. Is that what you're getting? Yes. Yeah. So every time he came on screen, I would just yell, fuck you, Spider-Man. Um, <laughs> I see. But he is a very good villain. Um, at, obviously, like, you start the season with, like, five different, like, storylines going on. But by the end, you only have three different storylines because they all, like, intertwine in some way, right? One could argue only of one storyline by the end of it. But uh, yeah, sure. the character arc of this villain, you can tell that the the brothers who write this have been planning um, Stranger Things out very thoroughly because there are very few plot holes, the twists and turns. I thought when I started, they started season four, they had played all their cards right away, and I'm like, it's only going to go downhill from here. But by the mm-hmm. time you hit s- episode, I think, six or seven... You go, oh shit! This just got real. So, um, how many episodes are there per season? <laughs> um, <laughs> it's somewhere between seven and ten per season. Oh, okay. But watch out, season four is like, oh, the first episode's forty-five minutes. The next one's an hour and a half. The next one's forty-five minutes again. And the last episode is two hours and twenty minutes. Oh, my word. Praise be. Yeah. That's, that's like it's like movie. now it's a movie feature. Um, yeah. But the thing that makes seasons one through three good was the fact that it was thriller. So I loved the fact that they stayed out of the horror. But with season four, I thought I was going to hate it because they entered the horror realm. Like one of the first scenes in the movie is this girl getting her bones absolutely cracked and like really weird formation she's hovering like she's been like possessed by a demon and it's like really creepy um so you're like okay this season's gonna hit way different than the past seasons um but i think it's a really smart way that they went about this at first when they were like 11 12 years old they tried to keep like thriller aspects they didn't go like full horror Gotcha. Because the people who are going to be watching it were probably around that age. Mm-hmm. But now the actors themselves are like 20, 25. They're in high school. And they can stand a little more edgy stuff. So they kind of grew up with their audience, I think. Was gotcha. kind of what they planned with and they did really well with. Um, 
So yeah, overall, Robert, I think you should definitely watch Stranger Things. Um, really good character arcs, really good everything. Um, it, I think it's one of the strongest shows out there right now in terms of entertainment. So, okay. I definitely think if you do you have a Netflix description, I do not. Do. Well, you should, you should somehow get access to Netflix and just binge watch it because it's very, very good. Very good character gotcha. arcs and, and everything. Um, okay. Season, the last season will be season five and that's the lead up to, and then that's what they've all been leading up to. So, gotcha. Um, sometimes shows you get scared with shows that they push things too far you know what i mean like they they just do it for the money for the views but there was yep. definitely planning going out for stranger things and there was mm -hmm. definitely yeah they definitely like thought it out and i think it shows in the way they were yeah it shows so definitely go and watch if you have netflix um highly recommend gotcha yeah right. So I think that's I think that's gonna gonna do it unless Robert you have anything you want to just direly talk about on this podcast. Um, but uh, if... No, not really. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just like silence for five seconds. Uh, I was thinking of falling off a lot. I would have had to sit there. Like... <laughs> uh, well, I just really gotta confess. Is this? Is this... Are you the priest? I need to confess my sins. Uh, <laughs> Robert? Yeah, no, 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 that's going to matter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Thank you guys for checking out this episode of LifeCast. Um, I'm doing these on my breaks, so be thankful. I'm just kidding. Um, you get what you deserve. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It, it's it's a lot of fun. I do it because I enjoy it. Um, so yeah, I I hope you guys um, take my recommendations, Robert recommendations. If you're into video games, you'll enjoy the first half of this episode. But if you like movies, you'll enjoy the second half. Um, yeah. So we went spoiler free on I think everything except for Sing Two. So yeah, that's good. Um, yeah. So yeah, thank you guys for listening to this episode and we'll catch you in the next one when life gives you lemons sing don't make lemonade no sing why does life. everybody finish that with like make lemonade do they listen to my podcast and know this is how i end every episode this is so sad i guess i, I didn't <laughs> uh, I, uh, <laughs> I, I forgot that my bad. busted he does not this i'm kidding when life gives you lemons, sing. Sing.